Hello everyone, Donna Don here with the uh, next update progress report on the War Corsair. If uh, you guys have been following along here in the last couple weeks, you know I've run into a couple problems, a couple issues. Uh, the one problem I had the last time I had to set on the runway was at 50 mile an hour the airplane would start running rough. So I concluded that it was the uh, air filter. Uh, the air at 50 mile an hour hitting the air filter was disrupting the flow across the mass air sensor which in turn makes the thing run rough because the signal's bouncing around so much the uh, computer is trying to chase this signal, this radical signal, and it ends up uh, running rough and running rich and you can literally smell it. So, uh, as you can see, I got my new um, shield made. The one I mentioned, I showed in my last video of the, the shield, so here's what it looks in uh, installed. Uh, I do have it just touching a cowling right here. Uh, this bracket I got back here, I can probably bend it or shorten it a little bit to help it clear. So I got that done. <clears throat> so I come down yesterday, installed this. It was a beautiful day out yesterday too. Nice blue skies, but it's cold and windy. You can see the wind sock today. It's swinging, you know, like that's almost down the runway, but it's running about 80, 90 degrees, you know, almost right out of the north. Uh, not 80, 90 degrees, but 90 degree crosswind that is. So there it's swinging more towards the north, but uh, it's pretty, pretty gusty out there today. <clears throat> So, and then the second problem I ran into was the uh, temperature was climbing. I had the airplane out a couple weeks ago, run it down to the uh, west end of the runway, and the temperature was really high. And again, that's when uh, I found out about this sensor. I put this, put the uh, other shield on here, and it fell off, and then it made the engine surge. <laughs> but it also uh, got up to like 220 degrees, so I turned around and came back, the engine surging the whole time. And then the uh, uh, water temp was sky high. And then once I got down towards the taxiway here, it finally dropped. It dropped down to like 190. So um, and then I took it out again yesterday. After it came down, I put this on and I tore the uh, antenna apart. I pulled the copper wire clean out of the tail of the plane, pulled it all out and increased the length by an inch and a half. So it's 24 inches long now. Put it all back there. I spent most of the time yesterday messing with that thing. It was a real treat to get that thing out of there. <clears throat> so, um, but I did do some SWR testing and I'll show you that here in a second. But, uh, so I spent most of the day fixing that. I was here for over four hours, got that fixed, put that on, and then I went to take it out and I taxied down to the east end of the runway. And before I got to the east end of the runway, it was up over 220. It was like 230 degrees. Again, so I turned around, came right back, <clears throat> taxied up here, parked it, got out of the plane, pushed it in the hangar, reached in, turned the power back on, and the temperature had dropped down to under 200 degrees uh, just from, from that. <clears throat> but it wouldn't come down, so, so I um, figured it was a thermostat. So today I bought a new thermostat, came down, tore the cowling off, fixed that, tightened the belt. The belt was really loose. Uh, it had probably wore in, stretched in. There's a lot of belt dust on the firewall back here, but the belt's in c condition. So I tightened it up, pulled the thermostat, switched out the thermostat, which is down there in the back. wasn't that hard to get to. Just had to wait for it to drain. Got a little bit of water on the ground, but that's all I lost. So I got that all in, topped it all back off, put the, uh, left cowling off, checked for leaks. So I took it outside and ran it up. Everything looked fine. So I came back, put the cowling all back together. Uh, I just had it out on the runway. I didn't bother trying to record it, but because of that crosswind, that, that wind is just swinging around out there like crazy. I seen a tri-pacer. I had to wait for a tri-pacer to come in, and he was rocking and rolling when he landed. So, so I let him land, and then another plane came in. I let him land. and So anyway, so I yesterday, this is my little SWR meter that I bought off of eBay. This was $75. This is an electronic uh, battery powered unit. It has a rechargeable battery inside and there's a little mini USB connector there and a little LED light um, somewhere. Yeah, there's a little LED light right here, I think, on the very uh, shades here, but there's a tiny little hole right there on the left side. That's a LED light. So I, it comes with its own little charger and a little short little cord. I mean, that thing's less than a foot long. Uh, but it's only meant to charge the battery in this because it's electronic. Let me turn it on. You have to hold it for three seconds. Okay. Now this is kind of a funny thing here, the way it works. 
you see that little red indicator it's on the lower left side of what would be like a number eight and that tells me here when you look at this you look at that line right there that center one which is SWR and when you push the button it rotates to the top position and that's forward testing which is power out watts and then the third one you can see the blunt line goes to the bottom so these down here correspond to it the bottom one represents the bottom number the dashed line there the middle one represents the lower left and then the upper so you got forward SWR and reverse and that's all there is and there's no calibration needed on this thing you just hook it up and go so let's get her back on to the SWR which is right there <clears throat> Now it's set for 118 Hertz and what you have to do is it tells you to hold on to this when you test. So let me see what happens uh, when I hit the key to mic. Uh, one second. <laughs> Hard to do this. See if I can key the mic. Uh, so yesterday I read it, it was down to like one 111, yeah right there, 117, 118. That's at 118. Well it turns out I ordered this, this was supposed to be a hundred megahertz to 525 megahertz but when I got it the instructions said it was only good for 120 so that's basically the SWR at 118 so it's going to be a little off on the on the low frequency because it's not meant to go this low all right so let's go ahead and change the radio up to the maximum one three six nine seven five and let's try it again 101 so every frequency I checked on this thing from there all the way down to 120. Let's see what 120 will give me today. And I'm in the hangar, which they tell you you're not supposed to be in the hangar. Well, I tested it in the hangar, and I tested it outside. And I got the exact same readings. I got 101 at 120. So the only one that's a little high is 118, and it could be just because this doesn't really go that low. But otherwise, the radio is in excellent condition now, so I don't have to worry about that. So let me go ahead and turn this off. But again, this was uh, 75 bucks on eBay. It comes with this little mail-to-mail -mail adapter down here. It really meant to be used with these little handhelds. Let me get this back to my frequency here, 123, before I turn it off. All right, so uh, so we're fine. But like I said, this is in the hangar. But when I tested it out there, way out in the parking lot, it was fine. It read the exact same numbers. So. So that's what you need if you want to test your meter. And this will still work with a, a panel mounted meter. You just have to get the correct adapters, which would be probably two of these, male SMA to female or male uh, BNC connectors, because most radios probably use a, uh, uh, a connector like this. So that's all you need. You just need to write sensors. And then this is good up to, like I said, 525 megahertz. So. <clears throat> it's cold today. It's only 45 degrees out here, and it was the same yesterday. Um, but I can tell you, I, was, I closed the canopy. Uh, my headset band on my headset wants to hit the top of the canopy, so I need, I do want to make a new canopy because this this needs to be a little higher. Uh, it also needs to taper from here up more. So if, once I get me a better canopy made, uh, it'll fit better. I might work on that this winter, maybe save it till next year, I don't know. But what I had to do is scrunch down the seat just a little bit. And I also need to adjust my rudder pedals because when I'm taxiing and I push the rudder, um, my foot is actually pushing more on the top of the pedal up here. And I'm actually applying a little bit of brake so it kind of helps tear as I push in the pedal. My foot is actually pushing on the top of the the pedal itself, and it's causing me to apply a little brake. So what I need to do is get in there and adjust the linkage so the pedal leans forward a little more so I'm not using the ball of my foot pushing on the rudders, which is applying a little bit of brake, uh, brake at the same time. So, But I can also tell you that today uh, the heater is in over there, and I got it turned wide open, and I closed the canopy, and like I said, my headset almost it just wants to touch that occasionally. I was able to close that all the way up, and and I was comfortable. I took off my my jacket. I got an insulated flannel on and a sweatshirt underneath it, but the uh, the sweatshirt in there, I was comfortable, snug as a bug in a rug, you know. <coughs> so um, after running this up with the cowling off, had a little bit of water spraying around, but I think it might have. Uh, spit it out the overflow can because I filled it up probably a little too high but uh, I didn't couldn't find any leaks anywhere so I cowled it up and it's perfectly dry in there so uh, I was hoping to get some more taxiing in to see if I can get up to 50 with it but I can tell you right now just with this back together running uh, it's running perfectly normal now and now they got the thermostat changed I was running around 
out here for 15 minutes waiting for traffic and the thing it took a long time just to get it to 140 degrees and then it finally went up to 180 went out on the runway it never got more than 190 and then by the time i was taxiing around it dropped back down under 180 so the thermostat is definitely working now so everything's go for it. go folks if you can see that <laughs> everything is ready um i don't have anything left to tinker with right now i just need to get down here on a on a less windy day yesterday was the same way um and then the next couple days it's going to kind of turn to crap. Calling for rain, snow, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, for Thanksgiving. Um, well, I think that's everything I've got for you today. I was, I did, I do have a different mount on the camera now. <clears throat> and I drilled a hole right here. So I can mount this camera here so it shines out this way. And I did have it on the plane yesterday. But because the temperature went crazy on me, I never even bothered to turn it on to record this, record anything. Um, the radio, like I said, the radio was done, the shield was on, it was ready to test, but the, the water temperature uh, was too hot and I, I didn't know what was going on. So I turned around and brought it back. Uh, and then I tried it again yesterday after I got the antenna all done and we're all happy with that now. So the radio is good to go, I shouldn't have to touch anything on it. I could hear everybody clearly, perfectly fine. And uh, I'm sure they could hear me. I can hear when I key the mic that I'm actually transmitting. So that looks good. When I did test the old antenna before I pulled it out, and the readings on the bottom end were 3.0, 3.12, or 3 on 118, 120. And that is way, way too high. Anything over 3 is, is like a, the danger zone. So <clears throat> this meter doesn't read to infinity, but it does read up to like 20, I think, is the highest number you'll see. But the numbers on the low end at 118 hertz were in the 3s, 118, 120. They were way up, way up into the 3.0, which is uh, too far. So, <clears throat> but once I, it was a 22 and a half inch long antenna. When I tested it in my house, 24 seemed to be the sweet spot. So I just brought that wire down, soldered it in, put it back in and tested it. And I'm, I'm happy. Everything is good to go. So, but it did, it did detect a bad reading at the low frequencies. High frequencies was all 1.01. I was testing five or six points, you know, from 118 to 137. And the only bad spot was on the low end, which tells me that when you have a low reading on your SWR meter at the low frequencies, it means your antenna is too short. You need to lengthen it. And if your SWR readings are higher at the high frequencies towards the 137 then your uh, antenna is too long you need to shorten it so mine was too short even though it was by the print uh, it, instead of 22 and a half uh, 24 and a half was seemed to be a sweet spot if i went higher than that then the swr readings on the 118 or 136 was starting to go up a little bit but they were still really low <clears throat> so i'm happy with it i shouldn't have to touch it anymore uh, one thing I do know, every now and then, I, when I came back from this taxi test, I hold this throttle like this, and somehow I keep hitting the flaps, and I keep putting the damn flaps down. So these guards are too wide, too far apart, and I can't close them in, but there is another guard that goes around the switch I'm going to order up that'll be harder for my hand to hit, because my knuckles kind of fit in there, and I keep hitting that damn flap switch, and I really don't have any other place to put it. So I'm just going to buy a different a guard. Those would work if I could bring them in, but you can't really see it. But there is a black plastic. Let me grab my um, <clears throat> phone real quick here and turn the light on. Oh, I already turned it on. But see, it's got that black plastic thing around there where it's labeled flaps up, flaps down. And I couldn't move these in far enough. So I'm going to take these off and order another thing to put in there to replace this and then you'll never be able to touch it with the new style. So, all right, uh, I'm going to get out of here. I've already been here for at least three hours or more. Um, what time is it getting to be? It's got to be getting to be, eh, it's 2.30, it's not too bad. But I haven't even had any lunch yet today either. I got down here probably around noon, so I've been here for a couple hours, two and a half hours at least. So, um, I think that's everything I had to address. No leaks. All narrator belts tightened up. Sounds good now. No squealing anymore. This is all in. Seems to be working. I did get it up to at least 40 out there, but the crosswind was really pushing me around. I had to keep getting out of it to uh, get the thing straight, keep the thing straight. And then the sun was just 
beaten down in my eyes. I couldn't, I literally could not see. Uh, I got uh, glasses that are auto tinting and they get, uh, I can't really see through them inside the airplane. I got to look over the tops and then look to the, try and look down at the instrument panel and the sun shining square in my eyes. I couldn't see, I couldn't see a damn thing out there. So I was like, no, I can't do this. It's too much crosswind and I can't see. It's just blinding out there. Um, and then the, the sun was literally coming through like the left corner up here and the, even the canopy just blinded me down on the left side of my face. So um, the nose is nice. When I was here last night, it was just for sunset. The sun was out in front of my nose. It blocked it fine. I could see the runway fine. But, uh, but when I turn a little bit and the sun come through there, I was blind and I can't see. Um, you know, you can put maybe uh, some of that film in there to block it, but it ain't worth messing around with today. So, all right, folks, I think that's everything I did yesterday and today. Uh, I'm not going to be able to come tomorrow. I got uh, things to do and uh, Tuesday, it's hard to say. We'll see, but the rest of the week's not looking all that great up here. They are calling for some snow uh, in a couple days, Wednesday, Thursday. Temperatures are supposed to get a little warmer, I think, around Friday, but... I'll be working. So, I'm going to go ahead and end this video now. As always, uh, appreciate everyone taking the time to watch these videos. Feel free to leave any comments, questions, or concerns. And uh, I appreciate uh, the, the comments that people are leaving now and answering as many as I can when I can. So, that's going to do it, folks. I will log this thing off and get this up tonight for you, have, so you guys got something to see. And uh, if anything else comes along this week, and I can get down here to at least try and get in a couple taxi runs, I'll try it. And then hopefully we'll uh, have some better results and to tell you guys about that next time. So so for now, guys, this is going to do it. This is uh, Dino Dawn out, and I'll catch you on the next one.